Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone, here we have right ventricle anatomy. Uh, right ventricle is the most anterior chamber of the heart. So right away be, be, behind the uh, sternum, we will see right ventricle and occupy almost two thirds of the anterior area of the heart. You can see a part of the left ventricle, one third of the left ventricle at that side, and limited to the interventricular groove, in, uh, atrioventricular groove, and its this shape is completely unique. In long axis four chamber view, is a triangle opposite of the left ventricle that is bullet shape or cone shape. On the long axis, if we cut four chamber this way, it becomes triangle. I will sh you show. I will show you shortly. In the sagittal oblique view, has a unique shape pattern. You can see has one inlet and one outlet shape. This looks like the foot and ankle together. I will show you later. And in the short axis, is almost almost crescentic crescentic that. Uh, surround less than half of the left ventricle. As you can see here, uh, the shape of the right ventricle is completely different from left ventricle. Left ventricle is a uh, cone or bullet shape, but the right ventricle is three uh, gonal shape that at the base level is completely different. And uh, right uh, ventricle in most of the part uh, surround less than half of the left ventricle. In long axis cross section here, the shape of the right ventricle long axis is triangle compared to the uh, left ventricle that bullet shape is completely different. Uh, we, the free wall of the right ventricle that usually they call from here to here, uh, has a three wall or we can divide it to three wall anterior uh, lateral and inferior and the septum that is common with the left ventricle short axis of the rv in unfortunately in most more than 90 percent of the textbook and resource of anatomy they show it as a symmetric crescentric like this you can see here but in reality is not. Uh, in short axis, we can divide it uh, right ventricular in two parts. Once here from, from here to top, we call uh, superior or anterior part and inferior part. Anterior part is smaller or narrower compared to the inferior part is wider. And our uh, measurement, our uh, view that we get in apical four chamber is include the lower or inferior part. Just keep in your mind. Anterior part is continue go to the outflow track. Inferior go connect and continue to the inflow tract. In other words, right ventricle has four components. One component that's here, we call it inflow, that's right under a uh, tricuspid valve, we call it uh, inflow apertus. Then mid, that they call it sometime uh, bod uh, body, and apical. Here, apical is completely packed of trabeculate trabeculations so is one of the uh, anatomic feature of the uh, right ventricle is uh, severe, severe trabeculation and the last component is outflow here the only uh, places of the right ventricle that doesn't have trabeculation is outflow tract Right ventricle has two anatomic features that we can uh, diagnose uh, that chamber is a right ventricle and we use it uh, 
especially in the fetal echocardiography and pediatric echocardiography. Those two features are one of them is trabeculation that is everywhere except the outflow tract. Uh, we call it canus or infundibulum of the right ventricle. And the other feature is a moderator band. Moderator band is a muscular band with the length one and a half centimeter and thickness of half centimeter in generally. And over 90% of the people, they have moderator band. In 50% of the people, moderator band location is at the almost mid of the uh, right ventricle, but in 40 person is closer, like this one is closer to the apex, and 10 person closer to the base. And the shape and echogenicity and thickness of the moderator band can be very variant, and you have to keep in your mind. Sometimes it confused with the mass or thrombosis. Uh, always uh, keep looking location connection it connected to the septal and free wall here we have uh, the outflow track of the right ventricle that is smooth and without any uh, trabeculation and that we called it canus arteriosus canus arteriosus or effundibulum that is about a, a crescentric uh, crest uh, on the out the beginning of the outflow the moderator band function is a lot at least they uh, study about the moderator band many uh, they found many function for the moderator band the most important is first it uh, prevent uh, expanding too much uh, right ventricle uh, second, there is a coronary artery uh, branch, coronary artery branch of the LAD pass through to that uh, and go supply part of the free wall, right ventricular free wall. And uh, many of the people they have a branch of the right bundle branch go to through the this uh, muscle band and is uh, in many situations irresponsible to the arrhythmia, especially unknown PVC. Here are those uh, features of the right ventricle that sometimes can confuse with pathology. Moderator band, you can see here, uh, as connected to the free wall to the septum, and usually horizontal, but it can be different location, just remember. Here we have a, a Papillary muscle, elongated papillary muscle. Right ventricle has a three papillary muscle that, that correspond with the three cusp of the uh, tricuspid valve. Sometimes it's very prominent and long go all the way and confused with the abnormal structure or uh, apical of the right ventricle, too much trabeculation and can confuse with the, some pathology there. Here we have uh, the right ventricular focus view, as I explained in uh, another clip completely about uh, right ventricular focus view. I recommend everybody goes and check it out. This is the best view for seeing detail of the free wall and inside of the uh, right ventricle. And you can see here is moderator band and trabeculation, especially at the apex, is completely obvious. For measurements, we, I explained there, you can go there, how we measure it and what is those landmark. Right ventricular function is unique compared to the left ventricular function. Uh, the longitudinal shortening means free wall movement or excursion toward the apex, this movement is responsible for the over 70% of the right ventricle systolic function. That is the reason uh, TAPC and TAPSV and longitudinal uh, free wall strain, those all three parameters that the best uh, parameters for evaluation rough ventricular 
systolic function and the radial and circumferential of the right ventricle play only uh, together only 30 percent of the right ventricular function as you can see here on circumferential strain the right ventricular circumferential strain is average minus four percent while uh, in the left ventricle is minus 24 a lot of differences or radial strain on the left ventricle is only 10 percent positive 10 percent in the left ventricle is above positive 50 percent so we can see that free wall longitudinal movement and shortening play a lot and uh, that is the reason eyeball guessing based on the excursion of free wall to the in and rotation always will be wrong but you can judge based on the excursion of the annulus that we do with the tapsy and velocity of that with the taps v uh, you can guess how much is uh, right ventricular cross systolic function and if, if you compare the amount of the movement annulus to left ventricle here mitral valve how much it goes forward to the apex compared to the annulus of tricuspid how much move up close to the toward the, the apex there are a lot of topics uh, for the function of the right ventricle uh, even structural myofibril arrangement all those stuff that I am going to talk about those uh, topics in another lecture about right ventricle function up to the next time have a wonderful time